You've chosen people who don't talk down, but do talk clearly. Was that one of the criteria for the book, or is that one of the criteria for ideas? Well, it starts with the criteria for the radio program, because the book came out of the radio program. So let me say a few words about that. Mostly ideas is a documentary show, and interviews are a component of what we do. And uh, we had done a book in 2005, which was uh, called Ideas Brilliant Thinkers Speak Their Minds. And that had been a his historical survey of what the show had had on, because 2005 was the show's 40th anniversary. And I'd begun talking with Goose Lane, the publisher, about what we might do for a second book. And we all agreed that doing some kind of other historical survey of what the show had done seemed pointless. So I said, well, why don't I look at what we've done since the year 2000, and it'll be ideas for the 21st century, or as we ended up calling the book, ideas for a new century. And so I went through maybe 60 or 70 interviews that we had done in the course of the, as I call it, the not quite finished decade of the 20, first decade of the 21st century, and gradually boiled it down. Um, so for me, there are two things that I think that happen in these interviews. One is you get a story. A story is real important. And so most of these interviews have some, uh, reveal something of the character of the person. You get a little bit of personal background. It's the way we structure the interviews on the show. And the other dimension of it is talking about the key idea, the key central idea central ideas that the interviewee has. And we just try to unfold it in a pretty straightforward narrative fashion with a little bit of challenging here and exploring there so that you get a coherent, listenable, readable story of what a person thinks. Quite a varied selection of people too. I mean it's not just sociologists and it's not but there are artists, uh, political theorists, philosophers, you see, when I put it together, and I was looking at the interviews, and the thing is, when we plan interviews, we don't plan to do a book. We plan to put an interview on the radio, and we don't even plan in any strategic sense, like we're going to do these 12 over the next year. It's a simple process. I have a producer, who's one producer who does most of the interview production on our show, and he'll say, here's an interesting book. Let me see if I can get the author. It, it's as simple as that. And we'll talk about them and he'll say, these are the things I'm reading. These are the things I'm thinking about. These are the people I'm thinking of getting. I feed him material that I come across. And out of that comes, one at a time, you get uh, an author. You get a Ray Kurzweil or you get uh, uh, a Louise Arbour, whatever, whoever. And um, so you do the interview. Then I'm faced with I'd like to turn this into a book. So as I went through, I discovered what came out of me as I was selecting them. First of all, I selected them for what I thought were the clearest and quality, and also things that addressed our current condition. Let me give you just one example of that. We have an interview in here, it's the second one in the book, with an author named John Gray, who's a political philosopher from Britain. And you know how we always talk in Western society about the separation of church and state, and how we talk about living in secular societies. And this conversation has been particularly um, emphasized since 9-11 and since Islam has come into a big way into our awareness. And John Gray writes a book and in which he talks about, we may think we have escaped religion, but secularism actually is an outgrowth of Christianity and has many of the same qualities as Christianity. That is the idea that there is a struggle between good and evil, that you can develop and that good can win. And secularism, that is a Christian idea and it is a secular idea, the idea that we can improve our society, that through knowledge, through science, through questioning, we can make things better, and that good will triumph over bad. Well, before John Gray, who would have thunk that? So to me, that was a 
an interesting idea. And then as I put other interviews, brought other interviews in, I began to see connections between them. Sometimes contradictions, too. And sometimes contradictions. I don't mind contradictions. We don't have to be consistent. There's a lot of different opinions around, and people disagree with each other. And I also wanted to reflect the scope of the program, so I divided the book into basically four parts. One which I called the culture of society, using culture in the anthropological sense in terms of looking at some characteristics that our society has, habits of living and thinking, ways of thinking that we have. Another section was Canada and the world, in which I had some material around that, and I wanted to talk about Canada. Another section, broadly speaking on culture, I think I called it the eye, the word, and the ear, and that came directly out of the fact that I, in that section I had two painters and a jazz critic. And then the final section called Futures. So to some extent, the book reflects the great range that the show itself tries to do. The book is Ideas for a New Century. I've been speaking with the editor, Bernie Lucht, and Ideas for a New Century, published by Goose